a jest of Robin Hood, our thoughts about the game after a couple of plays. Finny Rob over here, Evil Jeff over here. It should come no surprise that I have played as Robin Hood both times, and Jeff has played as the Evil Sheriff. Now, Is I am... really evil? Well, yes. I mean, yeah, he's kind of a... Okay. I, mean, <laughs> I mean, it's perspective, right? It's it, all his All his... Henchman would would be. Right. He hasn't done anything. They, they, really. they always tell him how great he is. That's true. Well, as you can see here, if you surround <laughs> yourself with enough yes men. <laughs> so I have never played any of the coin games in the GMT series. Now, this is not a coin game per se. These are the irregular conflict series. Uh, I have avoided them, the coin games, mostly because of the themes. They just don't interest me. Now, Jeff has played several of them, and he's been touting them for years now, and I just can't get into the theme. But you throw some Robin Hood at me, and my D&D nerddom <laughs> starts coming in, and I'm like, okay, that's something I can wrap my mind around. The intricate policies of the communist Cuba, things like that, I, I don't find that to be something I want to play a game about all the time. That seems a little bit too heavy. Robin Hood, I picture, you know, the Fox and Little John, like cartoon characters, yeah. even though this is still pretty horrible if you think about what's going on. All right. So enough about that. For me, the theme, though, really is what interested me in this. And plus, I was told that this game is less complicated than your normal coin game, which also kind of turned me on about it. So now that we've played it a couple of times, I really did enjoy it very much, and the theme is prominent here. I'm going around trying to take these places that are submissive to the sheriff and trying to let them be in revolt, and the sheriff is really just trying to put his thumb down. He's trying to squish the people everywhere he can. He puts out these carriages and steals money from, basically taxes them, mm -hmm. and then tries to get it to Nottingham. Meanwhile, Robin Hood's you know, stealing back for the people. And so you're, it's a tug of war back and forth on this track. He's trying to move it towards order and Robin Hood's trying to move it towards justice. Mm -hmm. We're going through an event deck. So uh, you can either do the event that comes out, there's something good for the uh, for Robin Hood and there's something good for the sheriff. And then you have to decide whether on this chart over here uh, where you're gonna place your token. And the issue there is you know, to the far right of that is the plots and deeds, which lets you do a lot of stuff. But then next round, every round when this uh, event card comes out, you don't get first dibs. And if something good comes out here, you might end up getting screwed. Uh, it didn't seem like a deal breaker because sometimes the events that come out, you almost neither of us really could benefit from them. And sometimes they were kind of minimum. If I have a bunch of money, I think I'd rather do the deeds and plots because I can kind of get more stuff going on on the board in one shot. The first uh, spot on there, the single plot, is really kind of a dud. But sometimes we still end up using it instead of the event because the event's completely useless. And then having the single plot lets you get first dibs when you, when you see the card next round because it's the farthest to the left. So, uh, but there are two parts during the game where we're gonna do this little track down here and kind of assess the board, how many submissive parishes there are and how many ones are in revolt. And then this is going to move up or down accordingly. Once that happens, though, if this token is on either end of the board, even before the deck runs out, the game could be over immediately. Now, I don't know. It would be really tough, I think. It's unlikely for the first inspection, but the second inspection... It could. It could get closer, could, but if the, yeah. if the sheriff's doing what they're supposed to be doing, they're going to make sure that Robin Hood's not going to yeah. have right. all of the parishes. Because right. if, if all of the parishes are in revolt, this moves three yeah. immediately, and that could really be a deal breaker. And we got close. Yeah. But we got close. I was trying my best to just wreak havoc uh, so that so the sheriff couldn't kind of focus all of the forces in one place because he's got the numbers, but Robin Hood's got the deceptive part of it, which is, you know, this whole, there's a whole reveal thing where, you know, you get the merry men, you want them to be secret if you're Robin Hood because you want to reveal them to rob 
you can't you can't rob if if everyone knows you're there. You have to be secret, and then you have to kind of sneak around to rehide. So I was moving Robin Hood around. He's got this deed that says inspire. So I you know if you manage to get these in revolt, and that can happen when the sheriff sets out a carriage. Uh, because he's stealing money from the people, uh, taxing. Sorry, yeah, it's uh, not stealing. You steal. Right, that's right. <laughs> and so he he does he does a number of things that make the people upset. And Robin Hood's trying to exacerbate that issue for the sheriff. And w- once these are in revolt, then Robin Hood can just sneak around and then reveal himself. Hey guys, it's Robin Hood. Remember you heard of me? And now this this slides up one. You know, um, it, it should be noted that. Um, Taxation um, pays for roadways and social services for all the peasants. Oh my gosh! And and so where's the representation? <laughs> that's seventeen seventy five. <laughs> so that's basically what you're doing in the game. What I liked about it was the asymmetry is really really cool here because I, there everything had a thematic reason why we were doing it. The other thing I like about this game, again, even with the sheriff, the there is this bit of deception for the sheriff because the sheriff has three types of carriages and they do different things. But when they come on the board, I don't know what they are. So two of them would be really great for Robin Hood to rob. One of them is worth five money. And the idea is if they steal, as soon as he plops one of these down, he's got to put it in a place where they're submissive, which is good for the sheriff. But as soon as he puts that down, then they become revolting. And now he's got to try to get this to Nottingham where he will then get whatever the benefit is. Meanwhile, Robin Hood's trying to intercept those. But also there's a risk involved because if Robin Hood fails and it makes it there, first of all, Robin Hood could get arrested. There there's one particular one. It's not out on the board, but it's it's basically a trap and it it will arrest the people who are trying to rob the if it fails if it yeah. fails and yeah. so there is some risk involved but there's like a cat and mouse game going on because do i really you know is he did he put out the trap one it's only worth two if it makes it here but there's a, another one that has this crown on it it's only worth two money but if the sheriff makes it to nottingham with that it moves to his way on this on this uh track also, every caravan that arrives moves it at least one. Right. So Robin Hood can't let that you know, mount up because eventually it will kill him. However, while the sheriff is concentrating on using these actions because you, they're limited, Robin Hood's out there you know, making all of these parishes angry, which means that whenever it comes to the inspection time, it can hurt the sheriff. So... There's a, a give and take here that you can't just go around doing whatever you want. Yeah. Um, well, I'm doing all the talking. You could tell tell me what you think about the game. Well, well, first I'll go back to the beginning. This not being a coin game, it it is very coin game esque. I, I mean, it uses the same mechanics as a lot of the other coin games that I've played. Although it is not nearly as complex, and it plays two players, which is nice. Although there is a a two version coin called um, the British way. And, and that's a fun one. It's a campaign type style, but, but this actually is much more of a, a gateway into that coin type play. It, the mechanics are very, very similar to, to the regular coin games. I, I do like the, um, the asymmetry that this game offers in a more simplistic way. The, the plots and deeds all make sense for each of the characters um, playing. And and it seemed like it was pretty balanced. I mean, there's a really interesting dynamic there with the tactics. You've got a long-term game plan that you're trying to achieve, but you have to react to what happens right, right now. And so, yeah, this is a, this is a very fun uh, two-player game. Uh, I liked it. And um, I, the, the only thing that I would say, I'm not sure yet, um, is whether or not, um, like you said, some of the event cards were as useful. Um, they, they aren't always either, by the way, in, in coin games either. Uh, when I've played those, sometimes they just don't work for you. And right. it, certain conditions have to apply in order for you to take advantage of it. And so if it doesn't uh, happen to line up, you, you, you know, you're not gonna use it. Um, so that's not unusual. 
I, I wonder though if it would be uh, something that they could make at some point additional cards. Now there are there are six cards that don't get played in each each game. So you randomly you shuffle the deck and then you deal out so many cards and then there's leftovers and you're not supposed to know which ones those are of course. You put those back into the box for that game. So there is some variety there, but it would be interesting to see if they I mean how hard would it be to create maybe another 12 pack? You know? Yeah, well, I don't know. It, it depends on the story of the of the thing that the theme that you're playing. So I yeah. don't know, you know, if there's the adventures of Robin Hood, then you could actually maybe have something that's a little bit more maybe fictional based that fits into the same board and everything. Yeah. But I do think though this reminds me of a war game and there are several games like that that we've played in the Academy Games series. And so like when you're playing 1775 or 1812, there's there's a set of cards that you have and you know them. Like you know that the, the Hessians are coming in at some point. Right. And so it loses a little bit of the wonder, like, oh, what oh that's an interesting oh the guy guy Sir Guy of Gisborne has come in. Oh, that's neat. After a while you're gonna be like, when is that jerk, you know, when is that card gonna happen? Right. It's a different experience. The newness of it wears off, and then you dig into the kind of the trenches of the war game. You're, you know, you have a meta view of of the conflict, and now you're like, well, I know that at some point General Washington's going to do this thing, or I know right. at this point Maid Marian's going to show up, and right. X is going to happen. So it's different, and I do understand. I just I don't know if these types of games. It seems like in the war games, eventually. The the once the shine wears off mm -hmm. and the freshness wears off, then you get you get to dig in and and do what what really that's, you know that's true. You become a little bit more experienced in it and knowing what to contemplate could be coming, and so you're ready to prevent something from really damaging you yeah. in a big way. So then it becomes a different, a different kind of fun. Yeah, right. No, I mean it, this is this is clearly a fun game, and I told you. Um, for a long time that you should try these sort of things and then when this when I got this I thought this was the perfect one for for you to really Try and like knowing that it was the Robin Hood theme. Yeah, and and not nearly as complex as some of the other ones For me, this is just the right amount of complexity for this type of game Because it starts to stress me out after a while that you know, I got Everything is tense from the moment you start, whether you're doing the right, you know, am I, is my strategy sound? That's always tense, which is normally, that's how games work. That's why we love games. But also it's like, what card's going to come out? And then, you know, did I, do I have enough money to do the thing I want? And it's just, it's a lot of pressure. And if I had to add about 15 more rules, I think it would just would become more of a, yeah, a, a yeah. of a business transaction than fun. Yeah. So yeah. here, you know, you put on a feathered cap and some tights and here we, we were talking about partying. I mean, at one point I had <laughs> four or five guys here in the forest and everything was in revolt. I'm like, why wouldn't you want to join up with Robin Hood? We are the fun guys. It was like Woodstock. <laughs> There's always stories in games like this and the event cards and things. It's like when we play War of the Ring, every time we retell the story of, you know, Middle Earth, Frodo and, and all that. And every time it's different. And it's kind of cool because you're still talking about the time when X, Y, and Z happened. That's right. And that's the stories about these types of games adds so much to it. Yeah. Every time you play, you get a chance to redo the story. Good memories, yeah. Yes. So yeah. those are our thoughts about a jest of Robin Hood for now. Thanks for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel.